What are you doing? I forgot to wear shorts today. You do realize it's like July 24th. So wait, wait, wait. You caught me in a lie. I, I don't have any clean shorts. So you're making your own shorts? I'm, I'm making some shorts. I think you just wear it like that, bro. You're like LL Cool J from like circa 1994. <laughs> Remember that guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and adults and kids alike out there, when you're building your pond, be sure to take the time in the preparation stage of excavation. It's kind of weird that Brian all of a sudden disappears after being out here by himself for the last few days excavating. Once the heavy work comes in, he's gone. Most of our projects take about a day. This one will take probably a little over a month to totally finish it. So you can just imagine how incredible it's gonna be. You give us a month to do something, we can do some pretty incredible stuff. They're more excited about the pond than their house. They've designed the entire house around the viewing angles of the pond. We're gonna do a big brick wall along here and then that deck should hang out over this so it actually has the appearance that the water comes way back past it. Ten small semi loads of dirt that have been hauled out of here and I've only done about half the excavation. All right, everybody, so we have the sand now applied to the entire excavated portion of the pond. Now, the next step is going to be getting that heavy duty underlayment. That's that really thick fabric that we're gonna put down underneath the EPDM liner to help give it that extra cushion, that extra barrier to keep any sharp objects, protrusions, anything like that, that potentially could pop a hole in that liner at bay. And we have a nice soft padding underneath that liner as we're setting our brick for our wall stone, which is gonna go directly behind me along this straight wall right there. But it will also protect that sharp concrete block or wall stone that we're gonna be putting in along this ledge behind me from coming in contact with anything sharp or hard underneath that liner. So heavy duty underlayment plus the sand is all very cheap insurance given the severity of a potential leak at the very very bottom of the pond which would suck so it's all about the preparation right so we took our time we've got our excavated depths all calculated figured out we know exactly where we need to be how wide we need to make that trough for that brick wall as well as the plumbing for the power heads that are going to go in there we have the proper depth in that channel so that we can account for a little bit of base material underneath that wall stone so that we get a nice level base it's all about the prep remember that guys and girls ladies and gentlemen and adults and kids alike out there when you're building your pond be sure to take the time in the preparation stage of excavation you don't want to be having to flop that liner back and forth to excavate out anything more once you're in the design process try and use foresight to plan ahead and doing all this stuff we knew it was going to be rocky conditions we're going very deep we don't want to take any chances with any holes or tears in the liner so again sand heavy duty underlayment and then we're going to put some underlayment on top of the liner as well so just to protect that epdm liner we do not want any holes i can't say it enough or stress that preparation enough. So we are gonna get rolling, start getting the heavy duty underlayment in, get that stapled up to the wall so it's not falling in on us. And then we'll come in and we will get that 40 by 50 liner in by ourselves. It's kind of weird that Brian all of a sudden disappears after being out here by himself for the last few days excavating. Once the heavy work comes in, he's gone. So he must be doing a consultation, selling ponds or something like that. So trust us when I tell you, or trust me when I tell you we, are, we got this and we're gonna keep rolling and get this project moving right along. So as you can see, the fabric is in. This is all the heavy duty underlayment in through here. We used sod staples. I don't know if you can pick that up, but we kind of pinned them in along these vertical walls just to help eliminate a lot of the folds. And then on some of these goofy folds, what we did was is we took a heat gun and actually melted the two pieces together to try and help keep a lot of that stuff from folding back and forth and also preventing some of the foils on the vertical parts of the shelves from kind of falling in and getting underneath our liner, but on top of the fabric. So the next step is going to be moving the roll liner which is strapped up on the mini excavator we're gonna actually bring it down to set it inside of the pond open it up and kind of unroll the whole thing in here rather than trying to schlep 2,500 pounds of liner in here with only four guys so trying to make light work of this wish us luck and we'll try and do it what are you doing I forgot to wear shorts today you do realize it's like July 24th so wait wait wait, wait. You caught me in a lie I, I don't have any clean shorts so you're making your own shorts I'm, I'm making some shorts I think you just wear it like that, bro. You're like LL Cool J from like circa 1994. Oh my God. Okay, well. They have those convertible. Let's just not end, have you end up in the hospital like cutting your femoral artery or something, all right? Um, 
Don't try this at home. Or just don't do it at all and buy freaking shorts. But whatever. Tomato, tomato, to each his own. It's always, it's always something unique that happens on the job site here. So good for Matt for taking the initiative to cool himself off. And we're gonna get ready. Actually, extremely light work of that heavy ass liner. I think it's about a pound per square foot, and we had about 2,000 square feet. So we had about a ton of liner. But what we did is, as you saw, we rolled it, lowered it down in there, and then unrolled it, unrolled it, unrolled it, unrolled it, and then ended up folding it out and expanding it this way across the pond. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to stage our wall stone that we are going to use down in this trough in through here that comes around this way and goes back that way for a very formal look that way and then that way. We're gonna use that to hold our liner up top over here. Um, you can see we've got plenty of liner. I think I'm gonna pull the liner back that way about, about another two feet, just to give myself enough to get up that backside there and pull all these folds, get all the slack out of here. So we'll use the couple of the wall stone pieces, again, to anchor it down here so that that liner is not gonna fall in on us like it's doing right there. And it'll allow us to help pull all the folds out and get this liner nice and tight all over, be able to hug the contours of some of these shelves so on and so forth. Once we do that, we will get fabric all along this wall and through here, it'll drape down and then we'll fabric the trough and then we'll start laying our base material down. We'll get our plumbing line in and then start setting our bottom course brick. We should make pretty good progress this afternoon. It's freaking hot right now. There's Corey with the first load. So we're gonna use these stones and just kind of line them up along in through here. It's hot, we're gonna do what we can. It's also Friday, so it's a great day to be alive and we're gonna cruise it. So here is the plumbing configuration that we are going with. We're using NDS pipe, so it's SDR 35, four inch drain pipe, and then we've got six inch fittings over here. So we go from four inch to six inch and then back down to four inch. That's our main trunk line. Our power heads are going to sit down in these six inch T's. They'll recess all the way down. Cable will come out of that hole right there and it will come out the back and we're going to take it all the way out either that way or this way to make it easily accessible. And then this four inch trunk line goes that way elbows left snakes in and then goes down to a snorkel centipede that will be over there but just wanted to kind of give you the idea of what is happening over here the top of these tees will sit about two inches above grade of this shelf right here so that no gravel and stuff is going to end up going down into the power heads it'll be a nice little retainer so we have to get this gravel underneath the pipe once we do that we will backfill and we will start with our first course of brick going directly behind this pipe so the pipe will actually be and then we'll cover it with gravel it right into the face of that stone wall that's going to run this way. Moving right along, first thing is going to be to elevate this pipe up to our desired level and then we will get the gravel compacted and then we'll start laying our base course. You can see what we're going for here. So you can see our pipe runs in front of our brick wall. That will all be covered with gravel, so you will not even see it. We'll probably spray paint those white tees as well. But you can see this Allen block is going in. We're filling with three quarter clean inside the block as well as in between them, just to give it stability. We are going to glue all these bricks, but these are going to be our circulation jets. One power head, two power head, three power head, blasting straight up. And everything's gonna be pulling from that snorkel centipede over there, like I said. We still have a little bit of work to do to finish this course right here, but this course is completely level. It's about 12 foot, eight inches out from the house, giving us a one inch setback every course we go up. And we're gonna have to go up eight courses. So the face of the top course of this wall will actually be eight inches further back or closer to the house than this bottom course right here. So we had to compensate for that setback, which is why we excavated out almost a 30 inch wide trench here to compensate for our six inch fittings and eight inch setback, and then another one foot for the top brick. So the back of that top course should butt up right into this ledge. We may have to shave out a little bit along here, but hopefully not. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap for the day. Um, like I said, it's Friday. It's been super hot with only a few of us out here. We worked our butts off. So we're gonna go ahead and get a quick start to the weekend. We will be back here probably in a couple of days, if not a week. I think we're gonna break off this project and try and knock out a few smaller ones next week, it sounds like. And then we'll be back the following week. So until we come back, that's where we're gonna leave it off. We've got the liner in in case it rains. Our hole is gonna be good. We got everything covered up, but really great progress today. I'm proud of the guys for the effort they put in and uh, we're gonna get back to crack in here the next day we're out here. Okay, peace.
challenge with the power head is it does this. Water pushes from this direction and then sucks, obviously, from the back underside of this. So in normal application, power head would sit like this. It would pull water from back here and then push water here. What I was worried about, if I'm pulling a lot of water from this area down in here, the leaves and debris get kind of confused on where to go. And I want all of that stuff to go this way and then ultimately overflow through our waterfall. Thank you. 